What's up, everybody? My name is Tucker. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some realistic Russell Westbrook trades. If you enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like rating on it and subscribe to the channel as well for more videos just like this one every single day. With those things said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the idea for this video is to come up with a handful of different Russell Westbrook trades that not only are realistic, but also make the Lakers a better basketball team. And I'll tell you right now, it was difficult to find things that met that criteria. I feel like I've done a decent job of coming up with some things that are at least close to accomplishing those two goals. If you've tried it all over the last couple of weeks to come up with Russell Westbrook trades, you'll be able to relate to the fact that uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. But I do think we're at the point in the year where the Lakers should be discussing the idea of what could we do? Could we move this guy and potentially make our basketball team better? So I began with the thought of what are some teams that need some star power and maybe they have some role players they can move to LA to get LA back to kind of where they were pre Westbrook trade where they have a little bit more flexibility in their lineup some guys that play on both ends of the floor a little bit better fit a little bit better around LeBron and Anthony Davis than Russ does and with that mindset I came up with a trade with the New York Knicks where the Lakers are getting Alec Burks Evan Fournier Nerlens Noel and the Knicks are getting Russell Westbrook and a first round pick in 2027 that is lottery protected so the mindset here for the Lakers is Russ just doesn't fit it, this is going to be kind of the the logic behind a couple of different trades here in this video it just doesn't work he's too ball dominant and you know he needs the basketball to be effective he's not a good you know spacer off the ball and he doesn't work with Anthony Davis and LeBron James and we know that those two guys work well together and Russ is the new piece here he's the piece that doesn't work let's go ahead and make a move you get back Alec Burks who can play both ends of the floor can space pretty well for you Evan Fournier who's not a plus defender but can create provide a little bit of that on-ball creation that you do still need as Russ leaves here in this trade and can space off the ball. And New Orleans Noah helps kind of uh, shape that front court rotation a little bit easier to where you can play AD at the four if you want to. Uh, you don't have to rely so much on guys like Dwight off the bench at the five spot. While for New York, you're there's some negatives and some positives here. From a positive perspective, you get I mean, a bona fide star. I mean, this is not a video to just say that Russell Westbrook's a bad basketball player. It's just a bad fit right now with the Lakers. But the Knicks are a team that are, are ready made for a player like Westbrook. They have other guys that can defend. They have other guys that, uh, you know, can space off the ball. He has players like RJ Barrett and Julius Randle that he can play with. But this allows Russ to be Russ a little bit more here in New York. And it just kind of changes some things up for them. They get out of the Fournier money, who in some estimations, that contract could already be a mistake. Uh, they get out of the New Orleans Noel money as well. Alec Burks, these are all guys that they recently signed. But you could argue this makes both teams better, provides a higher ceiling for New York, where, whereas it gets the Lakers back to a place where their roster just fits better around Anthony Davis and LeBron James. And then you get the pick in there as well, because this is a lot of money that the Knicks are taking on. And there's no guarantee that the Westbrook thing would work. And they are giving up three at least usable pieces uh, to the Lakers. So that's kind of the mindset for the first one. As we move on now to the second trade, it's pretty different. In this deal, the Lakers are getting Pascal Siakam and Boucher for uh, salary matching reasons. And the Raptors are getting Russell Westbrook and two future first round picks. So here's a couple of positives here for Toronto. Let's just say that they're making calls on Pascal Siakam and teams are not wildly interested. They're looking at the money that he's making over the next couple of seasons, and it's just not as valuable of an asset as you would hope for. And Boucher is a guy that's going to you know, want to get a new contract in the offseason. It's not incredibly valuable in terms of a guy that's almost 30 years old. It's going to be looking for a new contract and plays the five. He's been a nice player for them, but it's not like they're giving up a gigantic asset here. Whereas if you get Westbrook... Not only is that an asset you could potentially reform and send somewhere else later on, but you also get out of the Siakam money earlier. There's a possibility that you trade for Westbrook. Maybe he opts out in the offseason, but worst case, you're out of that money a year earlier than you would have been if you kept Siakam. And you get the future flexibility of these future picks as well um, that allows you to kind of think about what you could be doing uh, moving forward with this group around Van Vliet, OG, Scotty Barnes, things like that. So it's not so much about Russ the player, although I do think that he would help him in some ways because as interesting as some of their younger guards are, they're definitely missing a, a bit of an explosive element in terms of playmaking and scoring that I think Russ could provide them. But it's also about the flexibility added here and trying to get something out of Siakam under the assumption that maybe his, his trade value isn't as high as we think it is from the outside looking in. One point I will make about these, these picks and things like that, 
it might be a little bit weird in terms of what picks they do with don't know milwaukee in terms of pick swaps and things like that and what they can actually move with these picks but i'm including them here because the trade machine allowed me to and it's ultimately it's not a crazy amount of value because these are presumably going to be late picks moving forward in the future but i did want to mention that little caveat next up we go back to the idea of getting role players back in exchange for westbrook and it involves the dallas mavericks because in this scenario dallas does not have to give up Chris Tapps Porzingis. They get to keep, obviously, Luka, and they get Russell Westbrook. They create a big three in Dallas that maybe isn't the best fit of all time with Luka being as ball dominant as he is. Maybe there's still some of the same issues in Dallas that there have been in LA for the last couple of months, but you at least get stars. You get three core guys that you know can play when they're fully healthy, and you're not really giving up a ton in terms of you know players that are actually something of consequence moving forward or this season like Reggie Bullock is a good player he's a good two-way player that helps unlock some lineup things for Dallas Tim Hardaway Jr. is a good scorer and a, and a good shooter Dwight Powell is an interesting you know rotation big but it's not like you're giving up someone that does have the upside of Chris Epps Porzingis you still have the option to move him somewhere else if you choose to and this is really just a shake up the roster upside play for Dallas where there's no real avenue apart from trading Chris Epps Porzingis that allows Dallas to bring in a player the caliber of Russell Westbrook. And yes, you do have to give up significant rotation pieces. And Tim Hardaway Jr. is a guy that's good for you and can, you know, can score and can shoot. But this is just a ceiling play for Dallas and trying to make something out of what's been an incredible start to Luka's career. Worst case, it doesn't work. And in two years, Westbrook's contract is up and then you can start to, you know, look in a different direction, assuming KP and Luka are still there. For the Lakers, it's a similar story to that first trade we talked about. Tim Hardaway Jr. would be an awesome addition for them, kind of similar to the role that they envisioned for Buddy Heald in the trade that they almost made right before they did trade for Westbrook. Bullock, I already talked about his two-way ability, kind of unlocking some lineup combinations uh, for Dallas. He would do the same thing for the Lakers and be a plus defender for them, something they're desperately, desperately needing on the wing. And then Dwight Powell, again, similar to the Nerlens Noel edition in the first trade, just a nice rotational big to kind of throw in there. We move on now as I scroll to our fourth trade. And this one is probably the shakiest one of the video, if I'm honest. It involves the Lakers getting Serge Ibaka, Eric Bledsoe, and Marcus Morris in exchange for us. You can throw a pick in here if you want to. Here's a reason why this is shaky. One, the Clippers and Lakers, they, they, they typically don't make trades. They certainly don't make trades on the level of this one. I, I know over the last couple of years, they've made a few deals between each other. Uh, but they're not trading stars back and forth. So that's the first kind of issue with this. Also, I'm not convinced that the Clippers would make this move because, again, some of the similar issues that exist with LeBron and Anthony Davis would exist with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard once both are fully healthy. It is similar to Dallas. It is kind of a ceiling play here. It is an upside play. Um, but Marcus Morris, I guess, is the best player they're giving up. I think he fits decently well with a couple of, uh, you know, the other guys that they do have. But for the Lakers, you get Eric Bledsoe, who you know is going to defend. He might not be a fantastic offensive player, but he will absolutely guard. He's an all-NBA caliber defender when he's engaged and locked in. And I think a change of scenery could do that for him in L.A. Uh, Serge Ibaka, again, rotation big, something we've talked about in a couple of these different deals. And then Marcus Morris, who really provides them a lot of versatility in terms of what they can do uh, you know, on the wing or potentially playing him at the four. He's played the five at times with the Clippers. Just a lot of different combinations for him all of a sudden with the Lakers. Again, I don't know if this is a trade that either team does, but it's still an interesting one to look at. And then last up is the simplest one but arguably the most interesting one for me. And that is the Lakers getting Tobias Harris, the Sixers getting Russell Westbrook and Pascal Siakam, and the Raptors getting Ben Simmons. So we're looking at a Lakers situation where they're getting the, the out of, in terms of an individual player, this is the best player they're getting in return, uh, unless you want to argue with Siakam. I guess it's one it's one of those two guys, right? You're getting a guy back in, in Tobias Harris that is a really good front court score, can space off the ball. There's, there's really no issue in terms of fit with Tobias Harris with this group compared to what he's been doing in the last couple of years in Philly. He's be a really, really good fit for them. Uh, the Sixers would completely shake up their roster, moving Harris, moving Simmons. But then all of a sudden you're looking at a group that has Westbrook, Siakam, and Embiid, in addition to Seth Curry, Matisse Thybul, Tyrese Maxey, all those other guys that not only would be interesting for their group with this trade, but also could potentially be moved in a different trade as well to continue to reshape the roster. I think Philly gets interesting there. And then Toronto... You know, this is really good value, in my opinion. If you can get Ben Simmons straight up for Pascal Siakam, I think that's pretty good value. I think that the 
that's something that especially Toronto has more of like a into the future mindset about things, about their roster. Um, that would be a, a pretty good addition for me. There are flaws, not only with this trade, but with every trade in the video um, in terms of, you know, how would the Lakers replace some of Westbrook's backcourt creation that he has provided, especially during the regular season. Ultimately, I think that question would be answered with, you know, some more minutes for guys like Malik Monk or potentially getting a guy in a, in a, a buyout situation. I don't think that would be a huge issue for them. And, and more so, the, the concern should be how, to cre how do we create a really good playoff team? How do we become the best version of ourselves in the postseason? And I think it's pretty clear that that version does not involve Russell Westbrook on the roster. If they're able to make a move and, and move into a different team and get back players that do help them in a postseason setting, that remains to be seen. But I don't think that it's much of an argument at this point that they would be a better basketball team in each of these scenarios. And if they're able to move Westbrook for guys that fit better on this roster, provide them more versatility and flexibility, they would be a better basketball team as well. So I did my best. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about these trades or some other trades potentially you have in mind for Westbrook. Uh, but these are the best ones I could come up with in terms of just trying to make the Lakers a, a better team. But that is going to be the end of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, as I said in the beginning, leave a like rating if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel as well. More videos just like this one every single day. Once again, my name is Starker. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you all next time.